the Homo Naledi uh, find is really incredible. It's uh, most of the time we're talking about fossils that are represented by individuals, three, four bones, maybe 20 bones from one individual, two individuals. In the case of Naledi, we have 15, over 1,500 specimens, bones and teeth and that sort of thing, from at least 15 different individuals. And their excavation isn't even done. They just started the excavation. It's an extremely dense concentration of bones. It's in one tiny little passage in a cave. It's hard to imagine this if you're not familiar with <laughs> caves, but it's only, the, the cave is uh, just a few feet across at this point. It's uh, 10 or 15 feet long, this chamber, the, the floor of which is sometimes only, it's, you can't even put a foot uh, in there. Uh, and there's, it's not wide enough for a foot. It's a very narrow region just jam-packed with bones. They just took a portion of it and took out over 1,500 bones from, from uh, at least 15 individuals. They, they have males and females, they have young, they have babies, they have teenagers, they have adults, a wide range of individuals. Every single bone in the human body is represented in there at least once. Uh, it's extraordinary. There's a lot of, a lot of data and yet in a very, very small area. Interestingly enough, too, there's nothing else there for all practical purposes. Uh, there's, uh, there are some, there were some bird bones found in, the, in there. Otherwise, the only uh, animal remains there are tiny little fragments of rodents, uh, some various uh, long bones and some, some teeth and that sort of thing, and they don't come from the chamber, they come in from a side chamber and come from a hole in a crack from another room. So it looks like the only animal represented in this, in this room really are humans. That's it. Which uh, brings up the question, how in the world did they get there? As if you, if, if you're, let's say we went to the location and oh, we want to go see these things. You have to go into the cave and you have to travel um, more, more than three quarters of the length of a football field in the cave to get to this location. In, in some cases, uh, you're talking about very narrow passageways. You gotta go up, you gotta go down, you gotta go sideways. It's actually not easy to get in. And when you finally get into the big room that's just before it, you have to go over a huge boulder. And they've searched all over the place for any other route and there's no other route in there. But to go all the way through the cave like this, most of which is in the complete darkness of the cave, and then you have to go over the big boulder and down into the room. How did they get there? How did these human bodies get to that location? One's first thought is, oh, they're probably drug in there by carnivores or scavengers or something like that which is literally the first thought anyone would have. But an examination of the bones suggests not a single bone has any tooth marks on it, any evidence of being drugged uh, or damaged by teeth or by cut marks, for example, uh, perhaps how they came to die in the first place as they were attacked in a war or something like that. We don't have any evidence of damage, paramortem, paramortem damage, uh, which might have caused their death. We don't know what caused their death. There's no indication in the bones themselves. Plus, anything big enough to carry, especially full-grown humans, uh, scavengers and carnivores of that, uh, or predators like that, never go into the dark portion of a cave. They'll stay on the edge of the cave where you can you have still some light. Uh, and if they do happen to turn the wrong way and go into the dark portion, they'll typically get lost in, and die in there. Carnivores do not store their, their, their kill in the dark portion of the cave. So in the uh, three quarters of a football field distance in there, uh, two thirds of that are in the dark portion of the cave. So it's not even, we don't know of any animal that would actually drag uh, humans back that far, that's capable of it, that's big enough to do that. So again, how did they, how did they get in there? Uh, 
Another possibility is maybe they're cave explorers. Maybe they're people that, that got in the cave and got overwhelmed, got flooded out or something like that. But the problem is there's babies in there. There's old people and babies. This is not a, a crazy group of teenagers that got trapped in, in the cave or died in the cave. It's a complete population sample, if you wish, from babies to adults. You think, well, maybe it's some other big catastrophe. Let's say a village gets overwhelmed with flood, kills everybody, uh, and brings it into the cave. The problem is, looking at the geography of the cave, there is, you could potentially wash the people into, maybe, you could get them into the big room, but you can't get them over that boulder and down into that that side room beyond. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be any way to do that unless something literally carries the bodies in, climbs over the boulder, and drops them down the chimney. And they really are, there's a pile of sediment there at the base of the, the chimney uh, entrance that they, that they disperse from, that they fall away from. The sediment's piled up higher there, and the bones are are uh, dispersed from there. Uh, so it, the, the only thing we can conclude is that the only organism we know that could do this is a human with artificial light, because again it's dark, carrying bodies back into the cave and purposely dropping them down that hole, going through a lot of effort to in fact dispose of, uh, dispose of bodies, not damaging them in the process very carefully carrying them in and dropping them in place. Furthermore, when you look at the way the bones are deposited in the, in, in the cave, it's, it's evident that they weren't all dumped in there at one time, that in bodies were dumped in in such a way that one body crushed another one that had already been partially decomposed. Uh, that plus the fact that the bodies are not, they're not representing the kind of age distribution that you would expect to have in a living population. If you killed a, a village off, you're going to get a very high incidence of babies, and, and there's a certain ratio of ages that you would expect under these circumstances. If you killed all those people and buried them at one time, we'd actually call that in paleontology a life assemblage. It's a, it's a sample of a living population, even though it's dead. I know that sounds weird, but that's, that's the way we do it. In contrast to what we call a death assemblage, which is like a graveyard would be a death assemblage. Every time someone dies, we, we add it to the assemblage. It's going to be biased towards older people and younger people, those that die young, those that die old. It's got a different kind of age distribution that's characteristic of a, what we call a death assemblage, a graveyard. This is the age distribution is that of a death assemblage, as if these are people being deposited in a graveyard. Uh, the last thing to consider, which is interesting, is that the characteristics of Naledi are, there's a number of unique characteristics of Naledi and several of its bones and that sort of thing, not found in any other organism. And those unique characteristics are found in multiple individuals buried in this chamber, which suggests that they're all part of the same population. Even though it isn't, a, it isn't like you've killed everybody in a village, it appears as if a particular population has dropped their particular um, deceased members into this. They've chosen this uh, burial chamber for their population. So this appears to be a single population of humans depositing their dead in this chamber over a significant period of time. Not a huge period of time because it is limited by sediments above and below, but maybe as much as a century, uh, uh, years to decades uh, of time, they're depositing their dead in this location. We seem to be, I, there really is very little other way to interpret this than these are humans, the only things we know of that behave this way, choose a particular location for burying their dead 
and go to great lengths to bury their dead. In fact, carry their dead into a place where, you, where there's no light. They would have to have artificial light to take their dead back there and deposit them. So everything seems to indicate a single population of humans uh, choosing this as their, their cemetery, their graveyard. Uh, that would suggest we're probably talking about one population of people that came out from Babel and are in this location, distant from Babel in southern uh, Africa, uh, have, have chosen that every time they're in that region, or if they stayed in that region, uh, they would use this chamber for burial.